Hi, I'm Mark and this is Foothill Paint Fabrication. Today we're back on the 1950 Chevy truck cab. We have one more hole to fill in, uh, I hope. Uh, it, the owner has decided to move the gas tank from behind the seat and install one underneath the bed. So that means we have to do a filler neck delete on this, on this truck. So that's our job for today. So I'm moving in close and uh, let's get to work on this. Okay, here's the, where the filler neck came out. And as you recall, uh, this truck has a lot of paint jobs on it, so there's a pretty good low spot around it since nothing was ever removed when all, during all those paint jobs. So we are gonna be a little bit low anyways. Uh, once we weld this uh, patch panel on there, uh, we're gonna fill this and feather it right out to the paint, hopefully, and it's gonna be a piece of cake So uh, for once. Now, the owner actually went out and bought a uh, pre-made patch panel and it seems like it has the right shape. So it's just gonna fit right on there. And that's actually pretty cool. So I don't have to make one and bend one to the radius. And it looks like it matches pretty well. Uh, but before we uh, get to fitting this piece, I wanna confirm that this, the curve of this cab is nice even where the hole is. So to do that, I've got my little uh, kind of inexpensive uh, profile gauge here. And I'm just gonna slide it over. like that, and we'll lock it down. And so now I have the shape of the cab and I can just slide it throughout here. And I can look right down through there and see that the shape stays throughout. So it looks pretty good. So it may be a little bit low here, but I mean, not hardly anything at all. So that means that we can actually just fit that patch panel and then I can use this gauge to see if that patch panel is laying on the right radius throughout this whole thing. So let's go ahead and get the paint off of here and start fitting that patch panel up. All right, let's get the paint off here and then uh, we've got to get it off around this lip and then on the inside so when we're welding none of that comes up. All right, to get the, uh, the paint off this lip on the inside here, I'll just switch over to a wire wheel and uh, we'll get that all taken off real well. And then we'll start fitting the pat patch panel. Okay, so we got it cleaned up. I kind of went around the edge here. They have some sort of uh, pinkish primer or something on here. It was all over the edge. So I want to make sure we start off fresh and clean. And then we're going to try to fit this up in here. And since this is bent a little bit, we have to make sure we get this straight this way. So I'm going to go ahead and take a, a marker and I'm going to find the center here and I'm going to put a straight line right down through the middle of this. That way I keep the orientation. I don't get lost here and start fitting it on, uh, you know, try to fit it this way, grind, and then end up putting it back that way, and then it doesn't fit right. This hole is a perfectly circle, isn't a perfect circle, so um, I want to make sure I keep my orientation correct. Okay, we've got the, uh, the line marked on here with orient for orientation. I just kind of eyeballed it, and I can see it right through here. Now, uh, if you guys can tell, try to hold that in a way that you can see it, but uh, this side curves a little bit sharper than this side. So, and that actually duplicates this cab right here. So if I hold this right on here, just like this, it actually um, fits better than if I hold it like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call that up. And we'll just put a little arrow on there. And that way it makes sure I don't get lost doing this and it fits properly. Now 
And what I'll do is I'm going to get this to fit down inside this hole. Then I'm going to take that profile gauge uh, by, and have a magnet holding this up. And then I'm going to slide that over the top to see how it looks. So, because I can't hold this, it won't stay. I can't hold this and then slide the profile gauge. And I'll tell you what, that right there feels pretty good. So, with the, the way they punch this out, this lip goes in at a little bit of an angle. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grind a little bevel all the way around this so it sits inside there real nice. And then, then we won't have to clean up this hole at all to make it fit. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And then we'll see if we can get it to fit right. Just that little bit of taper made all the difference right there. So that's fitting really nice. It's a little long here. Could go down inside there a little bit more. So pop out there a little bit. The tedious part of all these is just keep fitting and keep fitting and keep fitting, but we're feeling really good right there. That feels real good. Feels real good there. Feels pretty good there too. I would just need to take a little bit off length. And the way I'll figure out where I need to grind is I'll look from the inside out and I can see the, the, uh, the light coming through and I'll be able to tell where it's touching. And that's where I need to um, go ahead and grind some more. And that's feeling really good right there. Maybe just a little tiny bit more, but not much. And I'll get it fitted and I'll bring you back. Okay, I've got a couple of magnets holding it up here. It's uh, fitting pretty good. It's a little tall right here on the bottom, a little tall on the top. I'm going to take the profile gauge. And remember, we matched it up down here. Now, this rolls up a little bit, so the, the radius does change slightly. But this is what I've got to go by. So I'll hold that up here, and I can see that we're going to be low all the way and actually a lot lower than I would like it to be. Some of it is the thickness of the paint. Some of it is just the, the way this patch panel was made. Probably could have had a little more curve to it. I'm not sure, but we're going to have to fill this anyway, so I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm going to fit this up the best I can. We'll get the welder over here, get this clamped into place, get it tacked and then get it welded and ground. Okay, we got it fitted really, fitted really nice. Um, I got three magnets on the back side and this one holding it flush. So I'm going to tack it on the top and bottom. And then maybe tap, have to tap it a little bit to get the others to line up. So let's see what we can do here. As soon as I tacked it, it pulled up over here a little bit. That doesn't look bad. Feels good here. Needs to go in a little bit there, a little bit in there. I think I'll tack it here and here, and then we'll just hammer these around. Okay, I got it tacked. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just let this cool a little bit. I'm going to grind the tops off of these tacks and then once it's cool I can check it to see if it's uh, flat or flush. Okay, I got it hammered out uh, pretty good. It's a little low. 
uh, we're going to fill that anyways. But once I get a well that I can uh, hammer and dolly it back out a little bit more and then, uh, then grind it smooth. So let's go ahead and get this thing welded. I'm no TIG welder, but I'll do my best here. Okay, got it, uh, got it welded up. I ground the lip on the inside completely flat and then hammered and dollied the uh, weld. First I ground the tops off, then hammered and dollied the weld, and then I dollied it out so this shape uh, is really nice. Checked it with a profile gauge. Not perfect, but it looks pretty good. All along there. It's a little low, but it's pretty consistent, so it's kind of riding up on the thickness of the paint here. Um, and then if I run the straight edge this way, it looks pretty good too. So, pretty happy with the way that came out. Uh, next step, we got a little low spot right here. I just tapped out a little bit with a dolly, so we're going to have to grind back here. I found a little body, uh, body filler right in here, so we're going to grind it back a little bit, all the way up to here. And then um, We'll get some uh, body filler on this, and then we'll get it roughed out. And uh, first I want to scuff this whole area, so when the body filler goes past, it sticks. The, the owner had already sanded uh, the whole cab very well uh, with some 320, but, so I'm going to go ahead and rough this out with some 80 grit more than likely. And then after we grind this, then I'll uh, rough that out, and we'll get some body filler on this thing. Okay, spent a little time. I roughed it up around the exterior like we talked about, and then... Um, I hammered and dollied it out a little bit more once I got that lip on the backside ground off. Um, I was able to dolly it out even better. So it's looking really good. Then I hit it with uh, some 36 grit on my big sander and uh, just kind of removed the paint back till I knew it was nice and sound on here tight and it wasn't affected by any of the heat or hammering and uh, blew it off real well and it's ready to be filled. So we're ready to fill this and if there's anything left on the, um, on the mixing board then we'll jump to the firewall where I, we filled all those holes and kind of flatten that out a little bit and fill that little rib right there and get that sweetened up. So let's, uh, let's get some body filler mixed up and get this filled. All right, let's mix up some body filler. Stirred up the can real good. It had been sitting a while since we did the uh, bed. I'm going to need a lot, but I plan on going over to the firewall, so I'm going to make a little bit more than I probably should. 60 degrees in the shop, so I'm going to add a little more hardener than I would in the summertime. Let's get it mixed up. Good. Swing you around. Okay, I know that this is a little low here, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to concentrate, just lay some down here, pushing down like always. Make sure we're getting a good physical contact to that base metal. And then I'm going to take a little bit more, and now we're going to go and pull to these edges of these paint instead of going this way over it, I want to pull into them because they're feathered down, okay? And that's just simply to make sure that we get good physical contact and there's no air bubbles up inside there. Just like that. And once we get all that done, then we know we've got a good physical base and then we can lay it over the top. Now I 
plan on cheese grading this down, so I'm going to fill a little heavy. I don't want to come back and do this again. But I might need to. And I'm going to reverse. I'm pulling this way, so I know I'm kind of waving it over, so I'm going to turn around and pull back the other way a little bit, and we're going to call it good. And I'm going to stop right there. Let's go over to the firewall. Okay, as you can see on the firewall, I, I taped uh, the holes from the back side so I don't have a big mess of body filler flowing through there. And then um, I went ahead and masked off the area just because it's going to be hard to sand. And this is just a firewall. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. So this is our main repair right here. And I want to push down in there and get that filled nice and tight. I don't want to lightly skim over this. I want to make sure that the body filler is pushed into all the pores of the metal and everywhere else first, just like we did on the other one. And by covering all these holes, I don't have to dodge anything. And I'll probably just sand this with a DA, so I'm not too concerned about it. And I want to get the whole thing covered. And then we'll start smoothing it out. Looks pretty good. Pull in over here. And we've got that raised rib right there that we're going to have to work around. So I'm going to come down to it and then we'll work around it. Try to get this top down so we're not having to do a lot of work sanding. The last little bit of body filler off the board. and over. Filler starting to set so I need to finish up. That looks pretty good right there so I'm going to stop. It's starting to set up. And then uh, I'm going to clean my tools, and then we'll come back and hit this with a DA later and uh, probably do a little hand sand around that piece there, and that's going to be done. Okay, before this uh, stuff sets up too much, we're going to go ahead and peel the tape off. This makes it easier. That's it. Let's go over and cheese grade that uh, that other piece. Okay, it's just about ready. It's maybe a little little past ready to be cheese graded. Ah, just about right. Okay, it looks like it's going to be a little low right there. I'm going to take the profile gauge and check it. Okay, it's really close, but it is low right here. You can see right there where the cheese grater didn't hit, and I even added a little bit more there. So I'm going to let this harden up all the way. We're going to hit it with some uh, probably 40 grit or 36 grit on the, one of the long boards, and then, uh, then we'll see, find out where we're at. 
Okay, I got some uh, 40 grit on here. I got my trusty wire brush to keep it clean so it doesn't get gooped up. And we're just kind of kind of rough this down here a little bit. Okay, my intention will be to cover this whole thing again. So uh, as you can see, you can see my grind line in there. So I want to go over this whole thing. Uh, we're low here, uh, a little bit low there. So, and obviously coming off this radius, it's dipping down, uh, at least right here. So I'm going to scuff this up inside here. I'm going to jump over to the firewall real quick and uh, rough that down too. So if there's anything low over there, I can use what's on the board to try to finish that off. But we look like we're roughed down pretty good. Looking nice down here. Really, this is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for that line. Uh, if it shows up, that's fine. The primer and everything will take care of it. But I'd like this to feather out straight onto the paint. And that feels pretty good right there. So I'm going to take a piece of uh, 40 grit or something just on my thumb and I'll scuff this down in here. We'll blow it off real clean and mix up another batch. Okay, let's get the second coat on. Now we're really good over here, so I'm not going to be Messing around over there too much. Pushing down still really hard. Make sure we get in all the pinholes, all the sand scratches. And I got it down real good. Around the edge here. Actually laying a little too much down, but I've got it mixed up and I can cheese grate it off, no problem. Try to stay away from that edge, I went over it anyways. That's looking pretty good. Whoa! That's looking pretty good right there. In the spatula. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to stop right there. And that should be enough. I'm going to go finish up on the firewall and then we'll get these cheese grated and roughed out and get some final sanding done on this thing. Okay, since I did uh, pretty much a light skim coat over this whole thing, a little heavier in the middle where we were low. Um, I'm just going to be very careful with the cheese grater and not tear up the sides. I'm going to try. So, and if you wait longer and it's a little harder, it's a little easier not to make a mistake with a cheese grater. But I'm just going to kind of shape this in a little bit lightly. Because I really try to lay down the material, the body filler, uh, uniformly. Except for where we were low right here. When we're all done, this should be nice and smooth. I can just run my hand over it. I don't feel any big uh, lumps or any problems, so that's a good sign right there. I've got a little ridge right here I'm going to work lightly. And this just reduces how much sanding we got to do, right? So if you feel like you laid it down really nice, 
Um, you can just kind of run the cheese grater over the top, knock the real ridges off, um, and then, you know, let it set up a little bit and then move straight into sanding with the uh, coarse grit 36 or 40. Like I talked about in the other videos, you want to rough this stuff in with really coarse sandpaper because you're sculpting, not smoothing at that point. And I'm going to stop right there before I screw it up. So, and I've been known to go too far and try to use a cheese grater, uh, you know, to try to reduce my amount of sanding. But that all in all, that feels really good right there. I'm going to grab the profile gauge. And I just got this uh, for Christmas like a year ago. And uh, it really comes in handy, really inexpensive. But boy, you know, it just really helps me visualize what's going on and duplicate other parts of a car and I'll tell you what that is laying on there really nice really happy about that so we're looking good we're gonna let this set up all the way so uh, we can sand it without clogging up the paper and then we're good I'm gonna go move over to the firewall and get that one knocked down a little bit I put a little bit of uh, uh, material on that so I just want to knock the high spots off and then I'll bring you back when we're ready to sand this out to its final shape Okay, it's set up enough. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, try to rough this down, and then we'll switch over to 80, and uh, this will be pretty close, and we'll stop right there. And I'll continue to go, you know, kind of a diagonal um, right here. It's a little flatter, so I'm going to go just straight up and down. Like we talked about uh, when I was doing the fenders and stuff, I'll, what I like to do is I like to establish the perimeter and then work towards the center of the repair. So I know that this is, uh, you know, blended in perfectly. And then we just basically keep shrinking that blend down to the center and we're done. So I'm just going to work this right here and get this area real nice. I'll work up here and work down there and then it'll be done. I'm going to try to keep my sand scratches just right in this area and try not to get too big. We can finish this off with the 80. Um, if I chase a bunch of sand scratches all the way up to that seam, then it's going to be a bear to take them out. So try to be careful. Feeling pretty good. Got a little bit right here and a little bit up here, but I think I'm going to do that with the 80. We've got this carved in pretty nicely. It feels good. I'm going to hit it just a little bit more. Got a little bit up here that I don't like. feels really good. Let's switch over to 80 and finish this off. Okay, get a little smaller block with some 80 on it. It's a little worn out, but I think it'll do the job. And I'll follow the same rule. I'll work around the perimeter and then I'll bring it back to the center.
All right, that's looking really good. I've got a little bit of a high spot here and what's holding me from getting that feather back in is I'm a little high right here. So I'm gonna work this area right here to allow me to bring that back in. All right, so that's all done. Um, we're at 80 and I'm gonna stop there until the, I get all the other stuff done on the cab. And then I'll come in probably with some 120 and sand this again. And then uh, we'll make sure we take care of all these sand scratches, maybe with some glazing. Um, we got little dings here and there all over the truck. So those are gonna have to be filled. So we'll go through, uh, we're gonna do a, um, a whole sand on this whole truck anyways again to make sure it's nice and flat and I don't miss anything. So that's done right there. Okay, we got this all roughed down to 36 and now down to 80 and uh, it feels really good. And we're gonna stop right here at 80. I got some sand scratches around the perimeter that need to be taken care of, but there's a lot of little nicks and uh, dings all over the cab that uh, I'll probably use glaze on, catalyzed glazing. And I'll, I'll come over here when I'm doing that at the same time, just more efficient. And I'll glaze these sand scratches in and take care of that at the same time. But we, uh, we got the uh, filler neck uh, patch panel welded in, dollied out, hammered out, and then now we have it filled. So it feels really good, really happy. Uh, and I'm also really happy to get the, this is the last hole to weld in in this cab. Uh, we ended up at right 27 or 28 holes uh, total welded in, you know, all the holes filled on this cab. It was a lot of holes, some small, just screw holes, but a lot of pretty good size holes. So it was uh, quite a bit of work of welding, cutting patches and uh, grinding and all that. So I'm really glad to get this part over with, trust me. But it came out great. It's gonna look great when it's done. And I'm really happy with, uh, with the progress. My TIG welding still needs a lot of work, but uh, I muddled through and got it done and I'll keep practicing, I promise. But that's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint and Fabrication. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I really appreciate it. And if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. I really could use the support. We'll see you on the next one.